Now I request uh, our uh, respected uh, Joint Secretary, Sri Sagar Maharaji, uh, to give his uh, opening remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Esteemed uh, panelists, co-panelists, aquapreneurs, entrepreneurs, fish farmers, researchers, my colleagues from Department of Fisheries and ICR uh, institutes, and people from media. A very good afternoon to one and all of you. As all of us know that uh, today we are here as a, uh, you know, at the third edition of World Food India uh, to, to speak and to deliberate upon the topic that is nutrition security through sustainable fisheries and aquaculture. So before, uh, you know, we invite our panelists, uh, let me give you a bit of, uh, you know, global perspective of fisheries and aquaculture. Uh, see, globally, the last reported figure of fish production is, which includes your, uh, you know, fish and algae, etc., is uh, two to three million metric ton. And uh, out of this, around uh, more than 200 million metric ton is going for the, you know, food purpose. So you can, from this total production, and the, the around 20 plus only is going for the 20 million metric ton is going for the non-food purpose. So you can imagine the importance of fisheries and aquaculture from food perspective and uh, the uh, food and nutritional security aspect <coughs> globally for all the nations around the globe. And 12% uh, of the global population is said to be suffering from hunger as per the FAO statistics. So 12% of the global population is a big size, that is around 110 million people. And the other figure is globally, 3 billion people, they rely on fish as a primary source of protein. That is again a FAO data, 2022. Also the fisheries and aquaculture provide 20% of animal you know, protein consumed globally. So out of the total requirement of animal protein, 20% is coming from, you know, fisheries and aquaculture only. The global fish consumption is around 20 and half kg per capita per year. So globally, these are the statistics. Back home in our country, uh, we are producing around 17 and half million metric ton of fish and uh, around 13 to 14 percent of population they they are you know facing the issues of having sufficient nutrition and against the 20 percent protein requirement which is coming globally from fish in our place in our country it is around 10 percent only so there is a whole lot of scope to announce the you know requirement of protein animal protein from fisheries and aquaculture again the the most important part is uh, that uh, of late the things are changing and uh, whereas we were two and a half uh, lakh ton of uh, you know fish producing from aquaculture now it is more than 132 lakh ton which is coming about 77, more than 77% of the total fish production. And as per the last study, which the department carried out through National Council for Applied Economic Research, our fish consumption has reached 13 kg per capita per year, which is still way behind the global per capita consumption. But I think uh, each year as we are adding to the you know basket production basket 
and the value add food product basket things are improving so from this we can imagine the the kind of fisheries and aquaculture globally and domestically important place it has and uh, the the nutritional aspect from protein perspective uh, omega 3 fats, uh, fatty acids micronutrients that aspect my you know experts colleague from icr they would be more competent to discuss so now uh, at the you know since we are at a you know forum where we need to discuss the importance of food especially food processing sector which is a critical part is an important part of our economy and plays an important role in ensuring food security reducing post harvest wastage and generating employment opportunities and if we talk about fisheries and aquaculture we have vast resources diverse culinary traditions and a growing population and with whole lot of efforts from government of india state governments and other organization we are you know all poised to become a global food powerhouse recognize the potential of food processing sector in transforming india into a food basket of the world government of india has taken several significant initiatives to channelize the investment and also initiate various policy you know measures initiatives in various sub sectors and verticals of the fishery sector also if i talk about fishery sector more than 3 crore people are dependent on fishery sector for uh, you know their livelihood earning their livelihood employment opportunities fishers and fish farmers at primary level along the value chain and for major you know part of people it is a source of income nutritional security and uh, each year we have seen in the last 5 year after we became a ministry that the share of fisheries and aquaculture in national gva or in agriculture gva is increasing constantly and its share in both uh, you know national gva and agriculture gva is increasing we are adding uh, you know more and more numbers to our share during last 10 years and uh, as per the doubling farmers income report uh, that is dalwai committee's report the fisheries has the you know highest potential in the maximum potential in adding to the income of the farmers as well as to the other stakeholders and fishery is the fastest growing sub sector of uh, you know all allied sectors during last 10 years government of india has taken several transformational you know steps to develop the sector and keeping you know welfare of the fishers and fish farmer at the core in the last 10 years the investment around you know more than 38000 crore has been envisaged whether it is blue revolution fidf pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana and the new scheme pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sahay yojana and in all the schemes the target has been not to produce but also to ensure that the you know fish as a source of nutrition as a source of food security reaches the people and to reduce the post harvest losses because the fish is a, a food item the moment it is harvested it starts decaying so for that purpose in all the schemes which i have named there has been effort to ensure that uh, the post harvest losses are reduced and it is reaching the you know targeted beneficiaries those who need it and uh, in the study carried out by 
National Council for Applied Economic Research, various three, four issues came up that there are people out there who want to eat fish, but because of price, maybe because of availability, because of availability of a particular species, availability in the nearest you know, market with a particular size is not available. That is why most of the people, they are not able to, you know, enjoy the fish, eat fish. So to address all these issues, which were highlighted in the report by NCR, in especially in Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, be it cold chain creation, be it transportation facilities, kiosks, wholesale market, retail market, all the components have been supported. Not only that, uh, apart from aquaculture side, on uh, marine side also, catch fisheries also, for betterment of infrastructure like fishing harbor, fish landing centers, cold storage, deep sea fishing vessels, putting off you know, artificial reefs to ensure that uh, the, the stocks are regenerated and to ensure that the, the, you know, your methods of catching fish are sustainable. All these activities have been supported under Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana and the projects, infrastructure project, projects uh, to the tune of more than 10,000 crore have been supported under Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. Apart from this, to, to ensure that whatever we are producing, we are doing this through sustainable methods, sustainable technologies. There has been a special focus on adoption and infusion of technology, be it RAS, be it Bioflock, be it aquaponics. All kinds of technologies have been supported and I remember that to disseminate the technology to, to ensure that it reaches the producers, those who are engaged with the technologies. We have supported quite a few resource centers also, be it uh, uh, Gadwasu, Ludhiana, be it uh, Churu, be it uh, Muzaffarnagar. Everywhere we have been trying to ensure through NFDB, through Manage, through ICR institutes, we have been ensuring that whatever technologies are available, they are reaching to the people for production of fish supply, ensuring fish supply, production through sustainable technologies. Not only that, we have been supporting startups. We had a you know, fishery startup grant challenge. We have been supporting innovative technologies with various you know, uh, entrepreneurship models. We have been supporting uh, traceability, standardization, marketability. Of late, we, we department has uh, supported one project with uh, Sifri Kolkata uh, to, to work upon that how the drone technologies can be applied in fishery sector especially the, the your uh, you know maintaining water quality other uh, you know health parameters uh, as well as the the how we can use drone for fish transportation and iot based solutions we have been supporting so the the in short if i say if i have to put it in brief to to support the sustainable production of aquaculture food Aqua food, blue food, Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana has done, you know, whole lot of effort and uh, we have already sanctioned more than the allocated, you know, uh, investment targets against 20,050 crore already. Uh, yesterday I was told that we have sanctioned 20,600 crore projects have already been sanctioned and uh, in the new scheme, which was uh, formally launched by Honorable Minister for uh, Fisheries and Aquaculture, uh, Fisheries and Animal Spending and Daring, 
on 11th of September, uh, the, the new scheme, uh, you know, has the incentives for, you know, adoption of efficient technologies in aquaculture. Also, those who are making investment in production of safe fish or fisheries products, we, we are incentivizing adoption of all these technologies apart from those who are also adopting risk management, uh, you know, uh, mechanism like if you are buying aquaculture insurance, that is also incentivized in the uh, new scheme. And uh, all of us know that uh, sustainable fisheries and aquaculture uh, is must if we want to sustain the growth of uh, sector in our country, if we want to maintain the momentum of our fisheries exports that have been, you know, every year uh, hitting a new record, setting a bar high. So if we have to ensure that uh, sector keeps growing, the people, the, especially the younger lot who are joining fishery sector with whole lot of hope, we need to ensure that the sector uh, is resilient. To promote resilience in the sector, we, we need to stress upon adoption of sustainable practices, protecting our water resources, developing aquaculture and investment in innovations only by doing all these measures we would be able to meet the you know growing demand for fisheries products while preserving our valuable resources uh, for the future generations and uh, let me share with you at uh, policy level also we have been constantly working whether it is traceability, whether it is national fisheries policy, mariculture policy, whether it is inland uh, fisheries policy, whether it is uh, on the marine side, we have been trying to ensure that of late, uh, I have participated uh, in the World Organization for Animal Health at Paris, where I, I participated for the first time and I came to know that around the globe, there are quite a few initiatives going on to ensure that whatever uh, you know we are investing in fisheries and aquaculture that is you know having the global benchmark uh, you know from aquatic health perspective because we have to be equally careful about that we maintain uh, you know the health standards at uh, uh, at uh, par with global standards. So that is a uh, very important aspect and government of India in association with all these states and while our, uh, you know, NBFGR in the forefront, we are running a national surveillance program also. So in today's discussion, uh, I hope uh, we would be hearing out about uh, uh, latest technologies, best practices, new avenues that can elevate our sector's capability. We'll also hear from the processing industry. We have uh, uh, amongst the panelists, the representative from processing industry also, the supply chain also, how we, we can maintain the momentum in all the verticals of the sector, be it uh, pre-production, production, post-harvest, production, post production processing sectors and I am here from the ministry side to, to hear out and with my colleagues to note down that what are the issues, what are the challenges at farmer level, at aggregator level, at processor level, at supply level, which we at the ministry can highlight, can you know find the solutions, what are the roadblocks, what are the challenges what are the issues? And not only from the panelists, I request the audience also, please feel free to engage actively, to share your insights, so that we can have a better collaboration to find out the solutions and drive the industry forward. Together only we can transform the challenges into opportunities and pave the way for a sustainable and prosperous future in the fisheries sector and ensure that 
we can play the role expected of the sector in ensuring nutritional and food security of our nation which we you know all of us uh, you know yesterday in the opening session also the the role uh, while the role of uh, you know various sectors apart from agriculture was being discussed where dairy was highlighted fisheries was also highlighted the the role of processing you know sector was highlighted uh, i believe if we work together there I, i i don't claim that all the wisdom exists with the ministry i believe uh, all the stakeholders if they come together they they do the brainstorming then we would be able to you know create better policy environment better you know regulatory framework rather developmental framework we would be able to create i i can see one of our very you know young entrepreneur rajneesh is here so he is a farmer who is doing farming at a very you know large scale and i believe every day he is uh, you know putting out for sale more than a ton i believe you put every day in the market so this is how he is uh, one of them there might be thousand around the country so those who are doing human service how to ensure that whatever he is producing he is producing the best it is reaching the target uh, you know consumers available at the best rate with all you know nutritional factors or constituents in place this is how uh, you know we are here to hear out from the stakeholders i believe i have taken more than the allotted time so thank you for uh, bearing with me hearing me out thank you very much thank you sir for your uh, very impressive uh, context setting and and uh, full uh, uh, briefing you highlighted the uh, global status indian status and uh, whatever the government of india initiatives has taken from last 10 years so definitely uh, there are many students they will take note of this and many policy makers are here many uh, industry people are here so next uh, uh, one hour uh, we'll have uh, the detailed discussion with the speakers uh, i'll before inviting the first speaker i'll just take 30 seconds uh, just to introduce our speakers i just forgotten in uh, initially so we have uh, 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 dr jay krishna janna uh, deputy general uh, deputy director general fisheries so he is highest official in fisheries when it comes to research and academic so in his presence there a lot of discussion is going on definitely whatever the discussion it is there let us go for the research and all those things so sir will uh, take into the next level so uh, little bit about sir <coughs> sir started his career uh, uh, in icf sir yeah yeah so then he worked in sifa uh, in bhuvaneswar then in ngfj then now <laughs> no for some students are there sir yes i'll take that's why i told the 30 seconds sir not more than that sir. so ne- yeah yeah next uh, next speaker um, uh, we have uh, uh, our uh, dr vijay kumar behra is our chief executive nfdb so he will be there for question answer and uh, uh, conclude any mass we have fdc our uh, fish development commissioner is on the way he is going to join with us dr koya he worked in gujarat as well as in east from lakshadweep he is having lot of idea about uh, marine fish he is going to discuss with us uh then we have dr mohan <coughs> principal scientist from uh, cft kochi so he is uh, a man at present working in uh, processing aspect when it comes to packaging uh, new ideas this all uh, latest uh, uh, technology golden uh, golden nano technology and all those is working he is going to brief us then uh, we have uh, uh, mr ankit arora a uh, global standard so i have something just i'll take two second yeah so ankit arora is senior manager in industry uh, engagement uh, gsa india is having 18 years of experience across industry uh, sectors in varied uh, uh, responsibilities which include industry engagement supply chain and management and public policy advocacy so thank you mr arora as accepting our invitation and be with us uh, today being with us today so uh, with this now i invite uh, first speaker uh, dr rasiva mohan transforming fish processing lever- leverage and iot and ai enhanced efficiency quality and value addition so we are already sir, running short of uh, time dr mohan so if you can limit 10 minutes uh, is uh, ideal thank you thank you very much sir uh, respected uh, dignitaries on the dais and after dais a very good afternoon to you all 
uh, I belong to Central Institute of Fisheries Technology under the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. So our institute mainly works on harvest and post-harvest aspects of fisheries. And I'll be uh, presenting uh, the today's talk on transforming fish processing, how we can lev uh, leverage IoT and AI for enhanced efficiency, quality, and value addition. So this is just a brief about the present status of seafood uh, exports in our country. I think we, uh, we are one of the major producers and exporters of uh, fishery products. I think uh, JSR has already highlighted the importance of fisheries. Just to give a brief about the uh, quantum of export, what we are doing is, uh, over the years, I think we have been ex exporting uh, fishes worth crores, crores together. Last year, we exported almost more than 60,000 crores. And we are exporting to almost 132 countries. And uh, US is our major exporter. But if, if we see the uh, products we are exporting, it is mainly uh, the frozen products. And uh, there, is, uh, there is a requirement for uh, diversifying the products so that we can earn better from, the, from what we are uh, exporting. This is the uh, item-wise, value-wise, and quantity-wise how, how, uh, how we are faring in the export market. Frozen shrimp is the major uh, traded commodity, both uh, in terms of quantity and quality. And uh, among the market segment, U.S. is our major uh, means importer uh, in terms of value. And in terms of quantity, uh, I think China is the major importer. So coming to our uh, to uh, today's topic on uh, uh, IoT and AI for the fish processing, I, I think whenever we do some activities, including the research, we generate a huge quantity of data. So that data, what we do is we analyze the data and generate some information to interpret what we have done, what observations we got. So whatever activities we do, we generate huge set of data. If we can use that set of data for uh, betterment, like uh, art in, you know, machine learning and all, we can get better solutions. So that's where I think uh, many, many, uh, there is a big debate going on. If we use this uh, AI, uh, it will reduce the uh, laborers and all in many fields. But uh, at the other side, it has a huge advantage of uh, advantages it is offering. It also generates huge uh, labors and all for the uh, in this sector. So if you see this uh, IoT uh, current status, when when we are uh, uh, when we see almost 20 years back, I think uh, uh, population was 6.3 billion, and uh, we were having almost 500 million connected devices. Connected devices means the mobile or uh, laptop or gadgets where we are connecting through the internet. So over the years, by 2020, and uh, during to, to, I think 20 years back, the connected devices per person was less than one. But uh, uh, on I think by 2020, it increased to six per person. That means we have multiple devices like laptops or mobiles with two, two numbers or one number, even laptop or smart phone, smart watches like that connected. It is all connected through internet. So per person, the availability has gone up more than six numbers by 2020. So almost 50 billion connected devices are available in the world. It is more than the world's population. So uh, many means most of the people are connected through this internet. So whenever this data, the data set generated, the whatever data we are generating, like why I was telling, we can generate the information from the data set, and later we can generate the knowledge and uh, understanding how what is it, what is happening, why it is happening, how it is happening, and then finally we will develop wisdom. So that is the process of uh, developing wisdom. So this is applicable to any field, including the fish processing sector also. So if you see the fish supply chain in India, uh, be it a aquaculture system or a marine capture system, so what is done is, uh, it, from aquaculture, the uh, local buyer can purchase uh, directly from the aquaculture farms, and then it can either it can go to local fish market, and then finally it goes to uh, common man. But at the other side, like processing side, 
so the buyer from the processing unit directly purchases the aquaculture producers and then they take it to the factory and then they process uh, differently like chilled frozen or dried smoked canned like that and then they store and export either either export or send it to the domestic market but in the case of uh, marine capture fisheries it uh, lands on landing center that is a primary producing uh, primary uh, pro means uh, producing centers and then it will come to the auction hall from there only all these links will start either it can be brought from the um, uh, local buyer or it can be directly purchased from the common man or it can be purchased by the processing factories and then it goes it enters into the other chains so if you see all this uh, linkages we have application of i uh, means ai so that i will be just uh, discussing with you all so i think you all may be aware about the uh, trade online trade or sea route trade like that but uh, most of our fishing vessels are connected with satellite data I means satellite they are using gps system so uh, we along with uh, sac isro and other one entrepreneur we are trying to develop this ai and iot based trading system from sea that means when fishermen goes to sea they will be going to many kilometers and uh, they will go with sufficient quantity of ice depending on the vessel capacity and then after catching the fish they will store and comes all the way to the landing center and unloads and then uh, that uh, trading will happen but if you have a mechanism that uh, this uh, whenever as soon as this fisherman catches the fishes he can integrate this uh, uh, this uh, images or how what fish he has caught what quantity he has caught what are the morphometric characteristics quality of this one based on the ai assisted mobile camera and he can uh, connect through satellite based system then auctioning can happen at the sea itself as soon as fish is caught this auctioning can happen through the internet so that will reduce the uh, so much uh, quality deterioration and even the it reduces the fuel what he has to come back and he has to go back so much fuel is cons means uh, utilized for that one so all these things can happen uh, with the help of this ai and all and also i think we have generated uh, for commonly available fishes three digit coding system we have generated and we uh, means that means uh, suppose if it is a, for identific for easy identification of the fishes and all that will be i think that uh, slowly we will be uh, implementing this one so advantage of this one is uh, apart from e auctioning uh, means at sea they will be getting real time advisory for fishermen and enhanced supply chain efficiency and they will be getting improved market access because when they land on particular landing center the buyers are limited within that area only so if we adopt this system even from all over india anybody can participate in this kind of system so that is the power of this uh, artificial intelligence and so and apart from that one even if you see the majority of our fishermen nearly 67% of our fishermen they are still under the below poverty line that is mainly because the uh, present uh, physical auctioning system they are not getting proper returns so if we adopt such kind of things i think they can get better returns to the fishermen also that is one application where uh, i think ai can be adopted another one is the enhancing efficiency and quality of fish at landing center like jss said fish is highly perishable it is not like other uh, meat varieties as soon as fish is caught it has to be uh, preserved immediately using sufficient quantity of ice normally 1 1 is to 1 ratio is normally preferred icing condition if we are not using proper icing so deterioration will starts so in landing center what happens most of the uh, vessels they will arrive at a particular time and they will come in many numbers so the waiting period for the uh, vessels are so much high so during this waiting period i think most of the ice will be melting and it will be deteriorated uh, so and uh, 
as soon as they reach the landing center they will not uh, replenish the ice they will be in a hurry to sell whatever they have caught so if we adopt some ai driven ve vessel monitoring system that means it can ensures that uh, uh, first in first out uh, system for vessel so that the fish means vessel which is coming early can leave early so that the fish quality can be enhanced so that is another application where uh, we can enhance the quality of fish another one is the uh, handling i think uh, fish is uh, i think uh, it is not properly handled at landing centers i think most of us know but still uh, we are unable to uh, create awareness to uh, to the handlers to uh, in means implement proper handling practices but if we uh, adopt this ai and iot based system like a conveyor belt from vessel hold from vessel hold itself directly it can be pumped into the this uh, storage facility or containers without without any uh, mishandling so it will reduce the mishandling of fishes or even uh, it has to, some of the fishes has to be particular means uh, per, uh, peculiarly we have to hold like shark and all you cannot hold from fins it has to be a, a particular position is there positioning is there to maintain the quality if it is not maintained that will results the uh, this loosening of the muzzle and it leads, leads to the gaping means if you prepare the filleting it will not come clearly so that is the uh, i think if you adopt this one those kind of handling problems can be reduced that the advantage is uh, advantage of this uh, system is it reduces the mishandling and it improves the efficiency and uh, it leads to the better quality maintenance another one is if we uh, take the fish from aquaculture farms fish or shrimp there is a chance that uh, disease diseased fish are uh, may come along with the uh, other fishes so the integration of this ai enabled monitoring system i think it will helpful to omit the diseased fishes for taking to processing sector that is i think this is uh, i think in aquaculture system many countries have already adopted this system like uh, segregating the diseased fish from other fishes or even the stressed fish from the other normal fishes so this can be adopted in our country as well then uh, when after uh, reaching the landing center normally what they do they take in a container and then it will be transported to the transported to the processing factory or to the markets but uh, uh, we have to ensure proper temperature because uh, uh, at every 10 degree increase this microbial load will double and even the other uh, other toxic compounds like histamine and all for particularly for scombroid fishes and all if we have a temperature abuse the bacteria responsible for this uh, histamine forming will be multiplying at faster rate and it leads to the uh, toxicity of that fish so there currently there is no uh, this monitoring system available for this uh, uh, transportation facilities normally they have a display system uh, and they have a chilled facility to monitor but if we integrate this I iot and ai enabled system the uh, the buyer or the owner of the fish who is purchasing they can monitor the fish in a better way and he can ensure that he is uh, supplying or marketing fish to the consumer in a better manner so that will uh, helps in uh, improving the health status of the uh, uh, consumers as well and if you see the uh, value realization for indian seafood products it is very less compared to uh, many of the uh, other foreign countries uh, if you take an example of this elephant tuna uh what price we are getting for uh, frozen fish is uh, roughly around 525 to normally 625 or 626 rupees per kilo uh, when we are exporting but at the same time when we when it is marketed in domestic market we are getting only almost uh, less than 400 to roughly uh, 450 rupees in the domestic market but if you maintain this sashimi grade uh, sashimi grade of this tuna you can increase to 10 times that means uh, per kilo instead of getting uh, 6 uh, 625 you can get 6250 or 
rupees per kilo this is basically based on the fat content or nature of fish the gaping level of gaping or level of stress it is imposed so this can be connected to the ai system like the we can monitor means analyze this quality parameters and we can generate huge number of images and then we can normally uh, normal this the, the third image what it is given now this frozen they cut at the uh, tail portion and they will see the color of the fish and they will see the gaping condition and then price is fixed it is purely based on the sensory method only but that i think uh, we are not uh, producing so much quantity of sashimi grade tuna because of uh, poor infrastructure facility we, can, we are unable to maintain that quality what it is uh, required for the sashimi grade so we are not marketing but using this ai integrated system we can definitely achieve this one and uh, uh, now whenever the fishes are taken into the factory in the export markets normally either in the export market or in the domestic market normally what they do is they check the temperature and they check the quality of the fish based on the sensor analysis and that uh, temperature of the fish should be less than 4 degree centigrade and then uh, sensorily it should be fit for consumption like ice should not be sunken it should have a bulging eyes and it should not have develop the uh, the white discoloration like that some quality criteria are there so those things are the uh, analyzed by technologist or sensory panelist and then they will be uh, uh, judging the uh, fitness of the fish for the processing and uh, that is that will have a biasness also naturally so uh, the integration of this ai i think it is we can generate huge quantity of uh, images like fish eye eye images or fish skin condition or gill condition we can generate uh, uh, images and then it can be uh, integrated into that one so this is the this is how the system behaves and then uh, there are ma machines available for grading but we can we can adopt this ai based system value addition also 3d printed techniques are available we can use using the ai ai based system and then process controlling we can do using this ai and this one so ultimately we have many uh, roles to i think many applications are there for both this iot and uh, internet of thing so if we adopt that one in the fish processing sector definitely i think we can achieve uh, better returns uh, and better efficiency and ensures the uh, we can also improve the value addition thank you very much thank you dr mohan for the wonderful presentation you have given a very detailed information about uh, iot and uh, ai thing this uh, question and answer will be reserved for later once the pre all presentations are over uh, then so you can ask uh, any particular questions so next is uh, mine only <coughs> uh, so i am going to speak about a uh, little bit about traceability because we have uh, mr ankit arara who is going to speak about uh, technical part of this uh, global standards on traceability so i'll just give you some details about uh, what is as present uh, uh, links and missing links are in uh, traceability thing yeah i think this already uh, yeah this already i think our uh, js and other speakers already spoke about uh, indian uh, uh, present uh, uh, status as well as uh, this sector by 2047 when india becomes uh, independent a hundred years of independence so we should have each and everything in uh, fisheries so whatever it is there in fisheries so we should have a facility as well as you have to grow accordingly that is our uh, target now so then uh, i think you are all aware so we have uh, i mean different diversity in india we have northeastern state coastal state reservation states himalayan states so whatever that policy whatever the species we are growing small indigenous species or species specific regional specific everything is important because consumer preference without consumer preference i mean there is no point in making this thing so based on the consumer preference and species grown in the respected area we should have a traceability and some information about that so that we can convince that end users to eat that fish and that 
then uh, sustainability i think we are talking uh, uh, from last at least one decade we are talking about sustainability in all sectors including fishery sector maintenance of the quality diversity availability of fishery resources uh, in sufficient quantity for present as well as uh, uh, in future generation that is the uh, target so then there are many challenges i think uh, you already uh, you are aware of the thing so um, uh, one is uh, food sector so when we all over the world if you see the growing population so food sector is the one so already we are self-sufficient within India. When it comes to animal protein, whether it is the meat, whether it is fish, so as on date we are 17.5 uh, uh, million ton we are producing. So at the parallelly we have many other things like reduction purpose. We have fish meal, oil extraction, sunmi based products, dried fish and everything. In addition to that, almost like uh, 1.2 million, 1.3 million we are exporting. In return we are getting about 60,000. All this information we have, but still. By all these things, still we are left out with so much fish in India. So for that, when you see the per capita consumption in India, so it is not up to the mark. So to reach that, if you see the Western countries and few other uh, Asian countries, so we are uh, not able to compare with that. So to achieve that one, something like uh, traceability, uh, certification, accreditation, these are the very important things. Uh, climate change is the one area, it's a really uh, it's a matter, so government of India initiated so many activities to understand the climate change so that accordingly we can uh, grow the fish and uh, disperse the fish according to the preference. Uh, then uh, as you know, National Fisheries Development Board in Administration Control of Ministry of Fisheries, almost all activities, it may be capacity building, training and uh, implementing things and all those things with all that is state including union territories by understanding their regional specific issues, species specific issues, we are working on that. So whatever the challenges are there, we are working according to that. Then uh, harvesting sector, I think Mohan already highlighted that. Uh, so CPU is the one thing. If you take a uh, traditional boat or uh, mechanized boat and all those things, uh, so we need to uh, standardize uh, some more effort on that area. Then uh, increase in non-target species. This was not there, I mean, earlier. Now, I mean, suddenly some new species will come which is not directly for the consumption and all those things. So there are many other uh, bycatch, including mammals are there. Then, uh, I mean, these are some of the things like engine power and board thing. Then uh, fuel consumption is the one area already more highlighted. Then lack of sustainability. By all these things, when it comes to sustainability, this all directly, indirectly, will influence that. Answer. So uh, there are some uh, input uh, uh, control measures. So restriction of fishing efforts we are doing, uh, closure of fishing areas, species protection, minimum uh, mesh size, MLS, so then uh, prohibiting selected uh, fishing practices. In the effect, if you see, so it is possible. If you can implement it properly, it is possible. It is already started. Reducing the fishing pressure, improving the fish abundance and uh, biomass in closed areas, recovery of species, that is very, very important present. Then uh, juveniles, production of juveniles, reducing uh, this uh, low value uh, uh, bycatch, improving fish abundance and biomass. Then continuation of that one, catch quality. That is the thing. As uh, uh, Mohan mentioned about uh, sashimi grade, that is one example he quoted. So uh, if you can have harvesting methods in the best way and freeze it immediately, like prime quality if you can freeze it, whether it's marine fish, inland fish, or whatever the thing. So definitely there is a, a buyer, whether it's a domestic market or international thing. With uh, a traceability, like where exactly it caught, how it has caught, I mean, how it has reached to the end users. Then uh, total allowable catch and uh, individual codes, so then certification and labeling and trade restrictions. These are the some of the things uh, from morning also we are discussing with uh, many exporters in our World Food India. So SDGs, I think you are aware of the thing. So we have done, uh, I mean, marine pollution is the one area we discussed. In 20 to 25, many SDGs uh, uh, we have uh, discussed and we made according to, I mean, whatever that uh, uh, things. Uh, how to achieve that SDG goals also uh, ministries with ICR institutes they are working. Then increase the uh, economic benefits in 2030 uh, into the small inland developing states and uh, least developed countries. So, so this is uh, the main thing by 2030 we have to reach out to them also. If you say say the global hunger index or uh, I mean in, in India also we have uh, some issues. So based on the SDGs whatever it is given if we can reach out so that we can uh, make available this uh, cheap fish protein for everybody. So these are our government of initiatives already our uh, giant secretaries are highlighted the thing. So to know the traceability to know the thing where it has happened for example artificial 1066 crores government of India 
uh, taken a big initiative to have this artificial reef. Because if you take the marine cache from last one decade, so there's not much improvement on that. Something is left out. If you take our uh, MS, uh, uh, MSY, maximum sustainable yield, we have 5.31. So we are already uh, 4.2, 4.3. So hardly we left out with 1 million. So to sustain that uh, system, we should have a, a, a thing like uh, uh, conservation of species. For that, we have artificial reef. When you establish artificial, we can have uh, sea ranching. So we know which species is suitable for a particular area and what is the strain we are ranching and all those things so that we can have it. The moment it's harvested, so we can have total control on the export market as well as uh, domestic market. Then seaweed farming, that is the one area. Really, uh, Government of India is working big hard. Then cage, uh, cage uh, fishing, cage uh, farming, whether it's a reservoir system or freshwater system. So working uh, very hard. This is one area, 8,200 kilometer, huge potential for us. So we are working. Then bivalves, muzzles, pulls, we are giving importance. Then uh, uh, vessel communication, then modernization of fishing vessels, safety devices, so that we can understand where exactly which depth the particular fish has caught, how many hours it took to reach the landing center, who has purchased, where it processed, where it has gone to domestic market and international market, so that we can have total control on the product. Then potential fishing zone, PFZ, so fishermen can get idea where exactly fish is available. Accordingly, you can bring, we can work with them. Then communication devices like transponders and all latest things, new boats and new nets. In the same thing with uh, river, uh, marine, uh, inland system also, river ranching, river almost like 19 state, uh, we uh, ranched almost all major rivers and all those things, so now assessment uh, is going on, there is some positive impact on the thing. Then seed production, strains, then uh, uh, fresh water, brackish water, saline water, I mean these four states in northern area, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, uh, these are the area we are working very closely with them without affecting the actual uh, productive agricultural land. Whatever the land, saline land is available, uh, we are working. Ornamental fish, recently our uh, uh, minister has launched our cluster for ornamental fishes, pearl culture as well as seaweeds. Uh, then cage culture I mentioned, oyster cultivation, marketing facilities. World class fish markets are, uh, I mean, coming up. Then a lot of uh, uh, fund has diverted to establish all this uh, 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 landing centers to best facility so that they can bring uh, better, they establish the cold chain, then support the validated products, transportation and all these things. Then certification, how it will be helpful. Everybody knows, one is self-certification with the farmers, second one is some agency, some third party agency if you can certify, so that when buyer sees that uh, pocket, so he can understand, okay, some government agency, some, uh, I mean, people are involved in this to make this product, so that without anything they can eat. So when it comes to certification, there are many things. Import standards are there, export standards are there, seed standards, feed standards, input standards, hatchery, aquaculture, and uh, these handling procedures. So when it comes to the sea, I mean, uh, feed thing, at present we don't have, I mean, this certification of the feed. feed. Many companies are, uh, I mean, producing their own indigenous as well as uh, imported uh, thing. So we need to have some control on that. Then when it comes to the traceability, as I mentioned, Everybody, many people want to know where want to eat the fish. But the first question it comes, sir, whether it is cultured, whether it is wild caught. If it is cultured, where it is cultured, who has cultured, what is the fed, what he has fed. So all these things questions are there. Then second thing, if it is wild caught, then where it caught, then it is in a pollution area, all these things. If you can understand these things, if everybody, all the stakeholders, starting from boat owners, to the aquaculturist, if we can come out with these things, I think uh, even uh, domestic market is, itself is enough for us. Uh, I mean, we can have a I mean, big impact when it comes to consumption, fish consumption in India. So I think you are all know this all uh, this uh, flow of information about traceability. Uh, okay, how it will move that one. So basically, this information uh, out of the supply chain can help. Uh, verify the uh, sourcing from legal, regulated, and uh, reported fishing. That is very important. So somebody should be there to, I mean, label it. Somebody should be there to tell, okay, this is the fish. We are responsible. The, our authority is responsible for this. If something is there, it's easily uh, we can uh, have better market. Full chain internal flow of information can reduce the supply chain waste and uh, improve the business efficiencies. Uh, then when traceability is fully consumer facing, increase the transparency may lead to the race of top where the sustainability performance uh, is improved including a move more just for the seafood system. These are the strategies for that. So if you can take any products for that matter. So there's have a strategy for that. So direct and indirect and forward or backward linkages so that we can connect each other. We can make it uh, sustainable. We can make it very clear. So, sir. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
इतना लोग इन्वॉल्व है सर ये सर so i think uh, uh, sir is there our dd ji sir is there he is going to speak about uh, uh, in general about overall uh, fishery sector in india so as we uh, said the department of fisheries government of india already we have naspied the disease control uh, you know i think target has given 1 lakh crore for us in uh, pmsy so i think uh, from aquaculture side and post harvest losses if we can control even uh, i mean uh, maximum level we can reach 1 lakh crores already 60 65 crores we are rearing another 30 crores is not a big deal if we can have disease control and post harvest losses so that is the one thing then uh, aquaculture traceability as i mentioned everybody wants where exactly it has got at least main uh, five six links if we can uh, inform them if we can mention them or maybe government agency involved in uh, from beginning to end i think uh, there are people uh, who would like to eat the fish especially this young generation so this is the thing <coughs> Uh, everything is involved in that. As I told, I think MPDA uh, uh, already have the catch certificate. So catch cert catch certificate will give the details which depth that particular day fish has caught, what fish, what catch, what the what is the catch composition, when it caught, how it has reached, how many hours. Then when it come to aquaculture, we have free harvest certificate. Free harvest test certificate. So before harvesting, three days or four days or five days before, so the, some agency will harvest the thing. It will be tested for antibiotics or pesticides or pathogens or what all thing. So they will clearly they will give the report. So it is free from antibiotic. It is free from these pollutants. So that that particular product can be processed and exported. And that. So then, uh, as you told, who are involved? Uh, persons who manufacture, process, pack, and hold the foods on food traceability list covers the entire food chain, food supply chain, includes both foreign and domestic entities, and full and uh, partial exemption may. There are many uh, few things are there. I mean, which are comes under traceability, which are not comes under traceability when it comes to uh, seafood. Also, this uh, this is the one slide. So when it comes to fin fish, there are many things. As I mentioned, there is a brackish water, there is a fresh water, there is a marine culture, there is a riverine culture and all these things. Uh, there is some uh, histamine, uh, uh, I mean, uh, bound fishes. There are non-histamine fishes also. Histamine is a small bio biogenic amine which forms in the fish if you're not able to control the temperature. So mackerel, bangada, what you call. Then few other sea fishes there. These are the fishes which caught. So that is one allergen. That is one uh, uh, thing. People will ask, okay, where you caught, when it is processed, whether it is exposed to sun and all those things, you have to label. There is a limit also for that. Like that, there is a, a black spot. Sodium metabolism they will use. So that also... There are many things, it pathogens, antibiotics, pesticides, histamine, there are many aller allergens also. So for everybody who want to eat fish by knowing this one. Okay. So if you can just label it, where exactly caught, what is the thing, what is the level. If my body is not allergic to 20 ppm, I will take that. If my body is allergic to 10 ppm, I will not eat. So it is possible. There is a limit. So accordingly, if we can pack it and uh, create the awareness, we can make market in both the area. So this is the thing, harvesting, cooling, initial packing, then uh, uh, the land-based uh, receiver, then shipping, receiving, trans, uh, I mean, uh, tra uh, transformation or transportation. Then uh, totally we should have a traceability plan from end-to-end -end solution. So traceability lot code, this is a little technical. Maybe uh, Mr. Arora will brief that one. So I, another two slides I have. So this uh, aquaculture shrimp, if you take uh, farm, our primary production, where that actually uh, seed is purchased. Okay, whether that particular, uh, I mean, hatchery is permitted, registered with uh, uh, regulatory bodies, that is important. Then uh, it comes, uh, I mean, uh, uh, farming thing, then it comes to harvesting, then it comes to processing plant, packing, and uh, export market. So that from uh, primary production to the processing hall, if we can have each and every data, so then, I mean, we need not bother anybody, we can export to any countries. More than 59 countries, India is exporting. So main for shrimp is uh, US, remaining all European countries, Russia, Japan. So definitely they have their own uh, importing country uh, requirements. So accordingly, we have to make a database. So the wild cut, as I told, uh, if it is a marine catch, if it is a reservoir or lakes and all those things, again, we should have that one. If any ranching is there, any stocking is there, all those things we should give. Then any pollution area and all those things there, we can mention in that. So totally, uh, so we can have total control on the traceability. Finally, uh, I want to, uh, I mean, conclude. 
So traceability, certification and accreditation. So these three, if you can uh, have understanding among the Indian uh, market or domestic market, so I think uh, we are self-sufficient. Whatever we produce, we can have it in India itself with international price, whatever they are paying. So you, you may be surprised to see some of the fishes what we are exporting. So that is uh, 300 rupees, 400 rupees in international market, which is uh, 500 rupees, 600 rupees available in India. For, uh, for example, sea bass. So 400 rupees, uh, export market, uh, 600 rupees is the local market in India. So if we can produce for us with all the safety measures, definitely we can have our own domestic market in big way. With this, I'll conclude. Thank you very much. So next I'll invite uh, uh, Dr. Koya, ready? Yeah. So strategic enhancement in tuna value chain, uh, leveraging technology for potential efficiency and marketing success. Thank you. Thank you, respected Dr. Jenna sir, Sagar Mayra sir, and all other esteemed uh, dignitaries on the days, and uh, the learned audience. I'll be with a very brief presentation on an opportunity for leveraging technology to have a uh, marketing system for an important resource. Uh, this is actually this con theme of this concept. This uh, program is on technology infusion in the uh, you know in general in food 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 trade, and then a lot of discussions are on the uh, automation on the I IoT and uh, um, AI and such technological advanced uh, you know implements in the food food industry. Dr. Mohan uh, had already told you about how the technology is being in fish processing and technology. Murthy sir also. In fact, I would have loved to hear from the other speakers and then tell, because I just want to sensitize that there's a good uh, fishery in India. Uh, we have, we can uh, do a lot with it uh, to support the uh, small communities uh, li living with these fisheries. So uh, tuna, the world capture fisheries production, if you see, you know, it is mainly uh, f fisheries, capture fisheries, in general world fisheries actually is a capture fisheries centric. Now just last year only we got some upper hand for the aquaculture. And you see the globally the Pacific is a major uh, uh, ocean for fisheries. The blue uh, part is actually showing the tuna. So tuna is all important in all the oceans and it is more important in the Pacific and in the Indian Ocean. So uh, globally, tuna is an important resource and very uh, uh, most traded, one of the most traded fisheries commodity in different forms. There are a lot of fishing methods uh, globally uh, practiced. Uh, the most prominent one is the persin in terms of volume. And then uh, a long line for uh, deep and large uh, swimming, deep swimming, large tunas. And pollen line uh, and such uh, surface fishing techniques for uh, small pelagics, smaller tunas. So in India, I, I will, uh, the, our tuna fisheries is actually very, very minuscule. We are not significant producer of tuna in terms of global tuna trade or tuna fisheries. Our major fisheries are uh, tuna fisheries all around the coast we have, although, but uh, the major fishery, tuna fisheries is in the Tamil Nadu, is the major uh, producer, and then Lakshadweep because of the tuna uh, skipjack tuna fishery is there, and partly Andhra, Andhra and uh, uh, Karnataka, Kerala, or uh, Gujarat, in different uh, scale. These are the major states. Actually, uh, it is more in the south, uh, southern, both southeast and southwest. These are the fish tuna mainly. Major tuna is actually uh, coastal tunas, which is caught in the present years, but. Uh, skipjack and yellowfin, the large pelagic, uh, the oceanic tunas are also uh, important and it is available at lower li levels. <laughs> tuna value chain, our country is actually, you know, I was telling that we are a small player in tuna fisheries globally. Our value chain is a very weak in, the, in terms of tuna because tuna is a very special fish with, because unlike any other fish, it has a, it is a warm-blooded, almost warm-blooded fish. 
it it it's uh, so and it is a uh, uh, it, because of that it is highly prone to spoilage faster spoilage enzymatic uh, degradation is quick so uh, tuna value chain is very uh, you know tuna uh, trade or tuna handling is very very sensitive uh, for that matter, our tuna value chain is weaker because our infrastructure is for all fisheries together, not tuna specific. So uh, often our tuna gets spoiled on board itself. Our fishing duration itself is around 15, 20, 30 days. On board storage is ice. Tuna is cannot be saved by ice alone. Simply icing will not save tuna. But tuna has to be f chilled on the at the golden hours that is the fishing on board immediately should be chilled and the temperature brought down to you know near zero temperature then the quality is arrested then almost we can show that we will fetch to any high value uh, value chain fishery as of now our in enterprise is uh, limited to ice storage and uh, no uh, chilled uh, what you call the uh, quick chilling is practice as of now so the f tuna trade, we have other issues. Sustainability is also an issue uh, globally. Supply chain inefficiencies, I was telling. Quality control, tuna, I, was, I sensitized you on the quality control. And the competition and market access. Very, very strict, very large volume producers, tuna producers. We, are, uh, we can't very easily compete with them at this point. But we have certain markets where we can focus on with the certain interventions, especially with the handling and then uh, technology interventions. The uh, we have two, three major, you know, important tuna fisheries locations which we can focus for high value, uh, you know, uh, trade. One is Lakshadweep. Lakshadweep is an oceanic island. Both Lakshadweep and, and Andaman, if you say, both are oceanic archipelagos. They are very close to the fishing ground. So the ground, uh, as the ground is closed, the handling uh, storage time is very, very less. So the uh, fish can be caught in at the prime quality. Andaman is not very uh, significant with tuna fishing as of now, but it has a good potential sleeping uh, as of now. But Lakshadi already is a, uh, an organized tuna fishery there, but purely uh, connected with the good market. In fact, is the geographical location uh, isolation is the reason, and then the mainland's poor value chain of tuna that is a major limitation for such. Andhra, we have a very good handline fishing of uh, you know Vishapatnam area, which is also a very good source for uh, you know this and tuna. Lakshadweep's tuna, I was just telling you, major tunas are skipjack, and then you know globally, to skipjack is a major fishery, and then uh, we have this fishery. Skipjack is excellent uh, resource we have, and it's a highly resilient globally, one of the most resilient fish resource, you know, Skipjack tuna. It is worth investing on that because it is it's dynamic, very, uh, you know, you know uh, uh, its dynamics are very, very supportive or resilient. And then uh, yellowfin tuna. Both this uh, Skipjack tuna is by pollen line. It's a one by one fishing method, one fish at a time by one hook. So the number of fish is, uh, you know, lesser in terms of uh, volume. By when you harvested, and then there are no bycatches, almost zero bycatch. There won't be anything else than the tuna that will be caught in this gear. Similarly, handline for elephant tuna. Luxury, we have a very good fishing ground for elephant tuna, very close to ground. In 500 meters, we get the ground, and then it's, it comes up by in on the shore in three hours. As of now, we don't use enough ice, is not available in Luxury as of now, and ice is not used. Without it, also it is good quality as of now. But so uh, these two, these are the resources I just sensitized you on. These two resources: one is elephant hand 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 line elephant, and then the skipjack uh, uh, pollen line. Now traceability and trans. All uh, our colleagues have talked about that. I'm not going to details of that. But this fishery, how we can fit it into the traceability loop and then transparency. What what it is brought down to. You know, uh, you know, affluent markets. There are our own domestic market is very good. We can, we can, we can easily, you know, cash on this domestic market. People are concerned with quality of fish, and once if this, I was telling the handling, if these kind of fishes are well handled, as it's stipulated, we can present to the consumers the best way these fisheries can be presented in a very best way. So domestic market is one. And there are some cases like you know Philippines. We have this catch document, document, uh, documental and traceability technology, the CDM. 
The cache documentation and traceability is integrated. There are good case studies in Philippines which is integrating the, you know, all as all levels of fishes like, uh, you know, fish catch to hook to cook they call it. In all levels it is integrated, documented well, traceability is maintained. So markets like, uh, you know, some of the domestic, you know, immediate uh, export markets, the, the Middle East, very good market for tuna, emerging market for tuna. And then, uh, you know, our own domestic market, how can we can marketing, uh, you know, strategy. In fact, marketing strategies sell products well. And then if it is, uh, you know, looped well, I'm done. Uh, so uh, these are the things I just wanted to share. So we have very good opportunity for tuna fisheries in India. There are few good uh, pockets where uh, thriving, uh, you know, uh, fisheries are there. Connected well, technology in infused well. These can serve as uh, good quality tuna to our own domestic and the international trade. While the communities are very small, very marginal, they will be helped, they will be supported largely by this intervention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Koya. So for a wonderful presentation on uh, tuna. I think this is the one fish which left out with uh, water now. <coughs> if you take Andaman or, uh, or Lakshadweep, many other area, this is the one deep resources actually we can harvest in big way. So actually I got a message, that is an another session, uh, so we need to leave this hall by four. So I request uh, uh, Dr. Anki Thorara. So next uh, speaker who speaks on uh, role of uh, global traceability standards in fishery sector. Yeah, thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. So I would like to thank the uh, department for inviting us and giving us an opportunity to brief you about the GS1 system of standards. So my half of the part has been done by Dr. Murthy itself on the traceability part. So we'll just move from uh, from what to do is already been done, discussed, and how to do. So I will just brief you about what GS1 is all about, what all we do and how these standards are relevant for a uh, traceability perspective. This can be related to any part of the product, it can be for fisheries, it can be for even for uh, other products, other fresh produced products as well. So this is our antitrust caution. Skip that, so yeah. So this has already been covered. I just uh, move on. These are all uh, been discussed here uh, and everybody knows about how introducing traceability can help Indian fisheries sector. Uh, one of the key uh, uh, pointers which I just wanted to uh, re reiterate is like it enables consumer trust and also helps you to comply to global regulations actually. So importing company regulations and need of product information is these three areas of which wherein the traceability helps a lot in case if you are keeping a track of the, the movement of goods in your supply chain. So yes, obviously, uh, benefits, of, benefits of traceability are all well known to everybody, which I believe uh, from making it, uh, from where the product is originated to how it can be recalled pretty fast, rather how can we have an enable uh, rapid recall mechanism or basically to manage any crisis, that is where it helps. For example, in case of any items being exported from India and due to some any exigency they have been not been allowed to be imported into the importing country then we can have a reverse track of information in a single place to track it down how and what has went wrong. So, so these are some of the listed uh, uh, pointers which basically are derivative of the previous slides what I have just uh, gone through. So, how can the global traceability standards or GS1 standards can help you in basically uh, help you with your business basically and help you to and how this can value add to your, what you are doing it right now. Okay. So these are some of the listed uh, uh, pointers which the top priority most is the standard, standardization of the identification. So how you identify a, a product or a item might be different as we communicate. Like uh, people might be here, not be able to understand Hindi very fluently, but our mode of communication is English wherein people can understand better. So, so we are talking about more of an interoperability or in terms of that is what the standardization enable for the, uh, for the companies and for the stakeholders as a whole. So first thing which, br which it brings to your table is the uniform and unique identification of the items 
as part of your supply chain and these are globally accepted so what we are doing it in india is also accepted by the people or the countries uh, which are going to be importing it the other in line is obviously end to end traceability to data sharing to as the product is uniquely identified so i can identify within a supply chain where it is where it has been sent to and from where it is originating apart from that you can also build upon the technologies like blockchain and digital platforms in the future and also enable the electronic data interchange between the parties from example one party to another from one government to another from one stakeholder to government so that we have a standardized data of sharing within the stakeholders as well so anyways these are all there for you and i think lastly i just want to touch upon is it also helps you to from the product authentication certification what all best efforts what you have put into it that all can also be linked to the uh, the the the, uh, the database and the information against that so about us we are an organization set up by ministry of commerce along with the founding members that includes apida asocham cii fiki fio imc and uh, spices board and iip basically we have been founded in 1996 and we are instrumental in terms of enabling organizations to opt for the unique product identification and how that data information can be captured from the machines to read so this is about the global organization so we are part of a federated organization called gs1 global so the india chapter has been set up by the our founding members as a prize earlier so these are the some of the sectors uh which i believe you all must be adhering to or must be experiencing day in day out so very commonly you find us on any product any consumer product in fact the water bottles which are in front of you also carry gs1 standard so there's a 13 digit unique identifier as part of a barcode that is the unique identity of the product which belongs to a company for example say kingfisher and say around 250 ml of mineral water which is there so in any change in terms of the product attributes the identification changes and then that forms the part of a uh, uh, forms the part of the supply chain and apart from that uh, the tolls what you pay uh, also has got a gs1 identification system as part of the rfid chips wherein you can pay seamlessly pay tolls now you can also pay enter into your societies using that rfid boom barrier and also pay your parking fees as well so i believe uh, by this particular picture what i want to make a sense here is that unless and until the data is structured or data is identified it doesn't make it, it makes sense if it doesn't make sense because if the data is proprietary or it's not understandable by the stakeholder within the supply chain so one end of the screen is the a picture of a truck and the other one is the jumbled or the puzzled picture of a truck where the different parts are scrambled together uh, all together so the the picture on the right hand side doesn't make any sense whether it's on the left hand side so right hand side makes a sense and the left hand side doesn't make a sense for us so what is the gs1 standards for traceability so we provide a foundational framework of implementing interoperable traceability system with global best practices which basically enables how it comes all together is that we are identifying uniformly and uniquely the items which are going to be moving in the supply chain these further facilitate your interoperability and then subsequently are easier to adopt by all uh, companies which are there in the in the ecosystem this is something very this is uh, and then which basically also enables your transparent transparency and visibility ultimately leading into consumer trust and subsequently these are all iso equivalent or iso parallel standards so so the 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 lot of thought process has gone into developing the standardization part so this is how it works so we have to have a first part is the identification system so we have the identification system of all the stakeholders from plant location to farm location to the product to the logistics unit to the assets which are all identified then this data is captured into a structured format it can be a barcode qr code or an rfid and then we have the how you share this information it can be information related to product master data transactional data uh, critical uh, tracking events or critical data elements so the core of gs1 standard is based on the unique identification so at a product level then we have identification at batch level and then we can have an identification at an instance level so product i'm talking about this mineral water bottle in front of you is at the product level in case the b101 batch of this particular product then we have a batch level identification and in case if you want we can have identification level of all the bottles all the bottles can have a unique identification system and then subsequently it will be to be tracked to an sku level as well 
So this is how, obviously, once the data you have identified, you need to capture the data onto a product so that the machines or the systems can read that data to make a sense out of it. So to do that, we you need to use the data capture technology tools. Generally, what you find on the product is the one-dimensional code. You also find QR codes. For example, there are two methods of paying to a via UPI. Either you catch a UPI ID or either you scan a code. In case if you can make a mistake in capturing the UPI code, you are not liable. You are not potentially are going to any make a mistake while scanning the code, right? So the data is accurately captured. That is where the data capture technologies like QR code are there, or it can be an RFID, or it can be matter of fact any barcode as well. What is important is how you encode the information structured into this, and then subsequently we come to the traceability data. As on certain of the slides, you must have seen the critical tracking events and critical data elements. So basically, in the traceability scenario, we are intend to answer those five Ws, which are who, what, where, when, and why. So I have just translated in the later slides. I have translated how a typical aquaculture supply chain will be working, and we have mapped against the GS1 standardized and GS1 standards as well. So what? Typically, are the two types of tracking data. One is the critical tracking event, like what has been done, and what all data elements, like all five Ws, are your key data elements, and what process has happened, shipment, inwarding, outwarding, export. These are all the. I'll explain it in the later in the later slide. So obviously, when the data is structured, so we can move the data from organization A to B. From India, uh, the exporters can move this data to the importers or the regulator regulator bodies, which are there, which are ready to accept this data in a more of a, uh, uh, a more more of a format which is more acceptable to them. So this is how a typical supply chain of an aquaculture. I am also learning, so in case of any mistakes, just do let me know as well. So uh, these are all your five Ws which are here. So it has starts from say brood stock suppliers, so GLN. Is the global location number of the brood stock supplier? What he is he supplying? We have a logistics unit which is carrying all those brood stock which are going to be supplied to the next location or the next stakeholder, and then we are capturing the identification of that particular brood stock with the GTN, which is the global trade item number. Then we have a batch number, production date mapped to it. Where it is going? Again, the GLN location or the again next to the quarantine location or the any other stakeholder which is going to be next part of the supply chain. When and time and date and shipping and import. We are ideally basically just trying to automate and structure the data. What you right now also carry in your ledgers or your kind of offline systems or the industry captures them in the offline system. We are trying to automate it, connect to a central system so that it makes value out of it, and then system and the organization, the stakeholders can have a more uh, br a clearer picture in terms of traceability as a whole. So this is again we are just taking it to the last level of the importer where step one step down step up traceability has been established and the data are collected accordingly and in a structured format which further can be pushed at any point of time and can be derived for the industry to use so these are some of the projects where we have assisted uh, the 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 organizations the central organizations and uh, so apida we have worked on the grape net traceability then these are some of the key projects wherein you can find the relevance of gs1 standard that includes export of pharma and uh, Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor to uh, alcohol beverages tracking. The best part is the industry is also doing this part in India for exports to the outside market. So the Indian export, Indian uh, manufacturers, the processing companies are already doing in such way. So that is something not which is new for the industry as a whole. These are sample labels which are there and uh, organization already doing it for suppliers to retailers outside India. So way forward, we, w we intend to propose to department on uh, basically developing a national traceability framework or with the stakeholder consultation. And obviously, we need a more of a, a regulated approach in terms of putting it to the industry across. On that note, I'll thank you. And again, once again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Ankit Arora, for a uh, very important, very impressive uh, global uh, standards and traceability. So now I'll uh, invite uh, uh, Dr. J.K. Jana, Deputy Director General of Fisheries. Uh, so he'll speak on aquaculture and avenue for attaining national security. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dr. Shagar Mehraji, Honorable Joint Secretary, 
Department of Fisheries Government of India. Uh, my friend, Dr. Behera, all colleagues present in the dais of the dais, ladies and gentlemen. I know for sure uh, I am the last speaker. Already people are uh, uh, just waiting outside. I do not know. Whatever I wanted to speak has been spoken. So probably I do not need to say anything. But having come here, probably I will take maybe five, ten minutes, uh, maybe in the cost of reputation. We have been speaking the product, traceability, but for all those, products should be available. So how do you have this product available for tomorrow? That is the important thing. Uh, since our childhood days, uh, those who are fish eaters or associated with fish, all of you know, few sentences all the time we write. Fish is a cheapest source of protein. Is it so? I do not know. I do not know. If you go to the market, you get fish, very few fish, maybe calves, get fishes, are cheap, may not be cheaper than even chicken. And some fish, as costly as whatever any fruit products, 2,000, 3,000 rupees uh, per kilo. Uh, if anybody want to purchase hilsa or uh, anything, uh, whatever cost you say, is it a source of cheap, cheaper source of protein? We do not know. And uh, we say country is abundant with water resources, which is uh, maybe fish, where fish you can get abundantly. Is it so? If water is available, what quality water, how much, where, whether they are available for at all, if it is available, also available for fish culture or not, we do not know. Uh, maybe I don't need to say how important fish is, all of you know. Uh, we consider fish as a, one of the superfood that FAO says. We, it is not my statement, it is a statement of FAO, a nature superfood. And as per Howard Medical School, they consider fish among the 10 superfood. And we know how fish is important today when you talk of global uh, nutritional security. Uh, Sagar Maharaji has already spoken about it, where we stand at this point of time, how important it is not as a source of protein, but someone told of whether it is EPA, DHA, and all that is what we do say all the time, omega-3, whether it is vitamins, minerals, we say how important it is for lifestyle diseases and all, more than 50 diseases we talk, if you want to, uh, probably this is one of the important food we need to be talking. When you talk of again how uh, fish is available for the country like India, when we were student, we used to study 56% of the Indian population eat fish. That 56% in 30 years, it has gone to maybe when you talk of uh, 2005, six. It was 66%, 10% increase, and recent study, what we did, 72% of Indians started eating fish. So when you are looking for, again, maybe another 20, 25 years, we sincerely believe the percentage of fish eating population is likely to increase. Again, population will increase. All those, how, how the demand of fish will increase, that all of us know. Even the per capita consumption, Sagar Maharaji was speaking about 12 to 13 kg today, which has gone from maybe 4, 5 kg all the time we have been speaking. And global production and all, I don't intend to say, but when we are looking for next 10 years at least, if we want to have another additional 20 million ton of fish, this 20 million ton has to come only from the aquaculture. There is no scope of again increasing production from natural water body. Uh, if you see the capture fisheries production, which is remaining stagnant in last three to four decades, it is hovering somewhere around 90 million ton to 95 million ton. So whatever increase in production we like to have, it has to come from the aquaculture sector, whether it is land-based aquaculture, whatever you say, whether it is, um, it is intensive form or super intensive form, whatever form you like to say, it has to come from the aquaculture only. So when you talk of Indian scenario, all of you know, I don't intend to say, in spite of the fact that we have been doing well, still we consider aquaculture is a sunrise sector, that is someone also had told, having great possibility of both horizontal and vertical expansion. When you look at fish as a food, 
maybe in 50s, we had only ambition, only target before the country was increasing the production. There was no second uh, target, increasing the production. To increase the production, productivity need to be increased. We have been successful today, a great extent. But today, the goal is different. Goal is fish for all, that is what we say. Not fish for all for today and tomorrow, fish for all forever. That is what is the ambition before us or goal before us. And we don't intend to have only fish, production of quantity of fish we need. We need, that is what, quality, safety, and variety. That is what is spoken. Quality and safety is so important today. But when we talk of, again, fish, another important aspect is the variety. Those who are fish eaters sitting here, you don't like to eat same fish daily. Definitely not. When you go to the uh, restuna, you want to ask for chicken, you ask only different dishes of chicken. You don't ask uh, whether this variety, duck or uh, poultry, poultry may be okay when you talk of poultry, duck come, chicken come or um, other may come, bird may come. But when you uh, talk of chicken, it is only one fish, different preparation, whether Chinese, Indian or whatever preparation. But when you ask for fish, you would like to ask which fish you are giving me which source it has come, freshwater, brackish water, marine, and most of the cases, the delivery boy, or even the today you had uh, lunch definitely, if you had asked anybody which piece you ate, probably many of you may not know which piece you ate. Or those who are serving, they will not be able to tell which fish they are serving. The knowledge on fish is so less, so less. When you talk of, even India, we talk of 25,000 or 30,000 fish available. I'm sure the students sitting here, they, uh, they will be knowing more when you talk of about 50, 56, 57,000 of vertebrates available in the earth, 50% are fish, uh, more than 33,000. 30 33, and the knowledge of ours, even in the Indian context, when you talk of 3,000 different varieties of fish, the knowledge on us is so less. When you were talking of again aspiration and expectations before us, expectations are so different. The people sitting here on the dais, the policy makers like uh, Sagar Maharaji, uh, he may be thinking, what is my expectation? How do I increase the production? How can I have a self-sufficiency? How can I increase my production? How can I increase the export? All those are the national ambition, national goal. But when a farmer, he does not, he is not interested to know all those things. His interest is how much more profit I can get, isn't it? That is the money at the end of the day, how much money I need to, I will have. And how much I need to invest, that is also important. I may have more profit, but if I can get more profit with less investment, that is also important. Whether I can sell my product easily or I need to be carrying somewhere else, all those are the, uh, 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 the goal before a farmer. But at the same time, the consumer, as people like us, they want, what is their goal? I need to get cheap fish. Fish should be cheaper, available. At my doorstep, it should be available, it should be safe, it should be quality, it should have, I should have variety of fish. If I am eating seven days or to, uh, to, uh, 14 times, four, 14 different fish or more different fish every day, I need to have a different uh, fish. So, and when uh, we value chain, those who are involved, whether it is hatchery owner, maybe feed the people, all those people, their expectations are different from the government. Uh, how can they have a tax exemption, probably, or a policy, better policy to increase, or a subsidy, how can they get? That is what everybody asks PMSSY. Can you increase from 40% to 60%, 60% to 90%? That is what the expectations. So expectations of all stakeholders associated with the industries are so different. And you cannot say anybody is wrong. Everybody is right. Everybody is right in their, their perspective. We know the challenges before us, so many challenges, so whether you talk of disease, input cost, climate change, water, because we cannot talk of producing fish without water. 
that is so important at this point of time. Energy, so important when you are talking of RS, recirculatory aquaculture system, bioflock system, any super intensive system, so much important. Energy is so important. So all those things are so important. So how, what is the strategy before us? How do you overcome these challenges are some of the important issues. Everybody knows all those things. So when you talk of aquaculture, we know for sure how much we have been doing, <coughs> carp, catfish, and all. I don't intend to talk of all those things which we know for sure, and I don't have time also before because people are waiting outside. So over these years, today we don't say that we are a country. India is not a country with only six species we are farming. We are farming as many as 60, 70 species today, but we are far behind many of the countries. All the time we do give example of China, for example. China, at this point of time, they produce at least 350 species they do farm. 350 species. We are not talking of 350 species at this point of time, but country, the target before us, can we have another 30, 40 species to bring at least about 100 species into the, our uh, table? That is our ambition before us. The, when we talk of large biodiversity country, we uh, all the time say that poor biodiversity hotspot we have and so many fish varieties, can we bring so, uh, some of them into our fold? That is important. It is not important. When people, common people, they don't understand between one fish to other fish. That is what I need, uh, uh, many times people, uh, I say, uh, they say, why you are not able to achieve the breeding technology of X fish? Uh, can you give me breeding technology of tuna? Why not? Yes, it is possible, but, but, the between one fish to other fish, for example, a catfish or a mareel and carp, difference is like elephant and maybe rat or mouse. That much difference. People don't understand. They, they consider fish is fish. So, but the breeding technology, fecundity, and, uh, uh, time it takes for maturity, everything is so different. It takes time. But, uh, but the beautiful thing is that the country like ours, the diversity what we have, are so uh, so important at this point of time. And today, probably the people like me about 40 years back, I had, being a student of mariculture, I'm a student of mariculture, I never heard about the pompano and cobia. Today, we talk pompano cobia. Today, we want to breed uh, or culture tuna or pomperate. That is what we have been talking. So sky is the limit today with the knowledge base what we have. Knowledge as well as wisdom. Both are so different. This wisdom have been generated from the knowledge based from every everyone. That wisdom is based from our traditional knowledge, what we hear from every one of you. That is so important at this point of time. So uh, we have been trying to do how do we have ensure the best quality of seeds, which is so important. We know the issues at this point of time, whether it is inbreeding, inbreeding, hybrids, back crosses and all. How do you overcome all those challenges are so important at this point of time. I don't intend to again give a big list of shopping list of the technology, whatever available, but at the same time, beside the conventional farming system, what we have been doing, Today we have been talking of new age farming, bringing uh, again efficiency, bringing efficiency uh, of utilization of resources. When I talk of resources, it is not only the water resources, land, energy, everything is so important at this point of time. Wh whether you talk of bioplock, RS, or uh, uh, the system like new system of what we are doing, shrimp farming, intensive farming with production levels of 40 ton or 50 ton, if, uh, production in four months of culture period. These are some of the new technology. Probably in the coming days, we will have a better technology than tomorrow, to, uh, today what we have. Maybe 20 years back, if anybody would have told us that can you produce 20 ton of fish from one hectare, probably nobody would have, uh, people would have told this fellow is imagining something, daydreaming something. Today, if you tell that yes, 500 ton per uh, uh, hectare is possible, yes, people will understand. Even today, people have been able to demonstrate as much as 2,000 tons per hectare meter. Actually, we should not count in, uh, um, uh, maybe we should not multiply, but that is, the, that is the figure we have been trying to give at this point of time. 
And we know for that, we cannot, uh, till today we have been giving emphasis in increasing production by inputs. That has been the major emphasis. We, our production system, increase in production has been based on the inputs, whether it is agriculture, animal husbandry, fisheries. But tomorrow's production has to come not only, only from the input-based system, it has to be knowledge-based system. How the knowledge you will be able to, whether it is IoT, or whatever system you want to include, it will be a knowledge-based farming system. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I had put the time, so my time is up, I know, uh, because I thought why I should get a, a cheat from Dr. Murthy. Uh, uh, so so, so uh, he was writing. So some of the new uh, technology, what we have at this point of uh, how do we take the, our technology to the farmer's level is so important. Uh, Sagar Maharaj was speaking about the health management system, emergency response system, the surveillance system in place. How do we enrich the surveillance system at this point of time? We have seen the, the issues what we have faced during the COVID time. That similar problem we should not be facing in the, our industry. Recent study we have seen the disease loss, just a disease loss. Disease loss in Indian aquaculture has been in the order of about 8,000 crores today. 8,000 crores, if we are somehow able to re reduce it to some extent. I don't say that totally we will be able to uh, overcome this issue of disease, but some extent, if I can reduce to whatever means, whether it is vaccination, by remit, uh, any sort of biosecurity measures, or from prevention is better than cure, what you say. If can we do that, if we can just increase the genetic stock if we can improve. That if 40% some species able to increase the potential it has got, if we can able to replace that, that means about 4 million ton will be able to increase. So, so much of potential before us. So, so these are the growth drivers. We know for sure it is not only the technology can do it, the technology extension system, investment, partnership, that is what we need, and adopt some level of the farmers and entrepreneurs. And it is necessary for us to say, because if I say, if production increases, scientists will tell, it is because of my technology, the production has increased 3 million ton in last 5 million ton. Policy makers will say, because of the good policy we brought, Government will say the investment we met, or the farmers will say, leave everything. It is I did. I did. It is not somebody else. If you would not have given technology, I would have borrowed from somewhere else. Somewhere else. So everybody take a stake for the same amount. So how do we again have an assessment, the contribution of each one of them? But there has been contribution. We need not fight among, among ourselves, but everybody's contribution is so important at this point of time. So as I told, the quantity, quality, variety, environment, equity, and export, all is the, uh, the goal, all are the goals before us. Not one goal, only increasing the production and productivity. So we have several goals, so we need to look forward. How do we go ahead, whether it is research and development, whether it is outreach and adoption, everybody is so important. So how do we bring convergence to have sustainable aquaculture, which is responsible, inclusive, resilient, and environment friendly? So for that, you need collaboration, cooperation, communication. That is so important today. Communication and convergence among, among all. That's why the platform like this, I'm sure, will be providing inputs, maybe infuse some something for the future to uh, so that the 40 million ton, whatever the expectation or dream before us, will be able to achieve. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now uh, we'll have a quick uh, a question and answer session, then followed by concluding remarks by Dr. Vijay Kumar Vera. We can have a few questions. Yeah. Uh, my question will be to Dr. Jena. Dr. Jena, in your deliberation, you had mentioned about tuna, and my focus is on deep sea tuna fishing. Now, your focus was more on the production end, breeding, production. But at the same time, fishing is also a very important part for us. I'm referring to Indian Ocean, the Indian territory, which is within our <coughs> economic zone, and 
focusing on blue economy, we are missing out the fishing, fishing of deep sea tuna just because we are not having deep sea trawlers, vessels to fish them and to process them. Now that's also a thing which is to focus because this has export potential and in European markets, we are missing out this opportunity and it's been taken by Thailand. So what's your take on that in terms of how we can connect this gap? Thank can, you. Can you just introduce yourself? Like you are uh, yeah. My name is Parthapatim Dash, and I head a leadership consulting firm by the name PGI Associates, which has a focus on market entry, industry research, technology commercialization, okay. and policy recommendations. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I do not know whether you... Uh, we had a separate presentation by Dr. Koya. Just before my presentation, maybe uh, some time back, Dr. Koya gave a presentation only on tuna uh, because uh, we did not want to cover the same thing every speaker. Every speaker tried to take different, different presentations. So there was a specific presentation on tuna, but you are correct. Uh, whatever the tuna resources, what we have, whether we have been able to uh, you, uh, effectively catch deeper water, you talked about, this is an oceanic species, all of us know. Uh, you, uh, Dr. Koya mentioned about the Laksha deep water, skipjack tuna and all, but we are interested more of European tuna. That is what we have been talking of international market. Uh, he gave an example of uh, sashimi grade and all. Uh, everything is possible, but the uh, but these uh, vessels before us, you know, on board processing, that is what Dr. Koya also mentioned. The just after catch, whether we are able to preserve whatever the way we like to have, probably not. We are doing with eyes only. It need to be immediately, uh, uh, even the recent uh, days technology we have, even any size of fish, within seconds you can freeze it. Just dip it, it will get freezed. So there are technology available, probably coming days uh, when we are talking of again uh, deep sea fishing and all, already ministry the, under the PM, PMSSY, they have taken effort of again having deep sea fishing vessels, yes, I think more than 200 vessels and all. Yes, I do not know exactly how many vessels are operated today, but I'm sure in the coming days, uh, there will be effective fishing uh, of tuna. We want to utilize it. Whatever fish, not only the quantum of increasing the catch, but whatever amount we are catching, how do we ensure yes. that we get money from that? If uh, the international market is $7 or $8, mm -hmm. if we are getting only $2 or $3, that, that is the issue. Quality is a major issue at this point of time. But government is very much aware, I'm sure, in the uh, uh, ministry let has me, taken apart. Let me supplement Dr. Jaina. See, recognizing the fact that uh, in the Andamans, as well as in Lakshadweep, there are good tuna resources, and to ensure their you know, sustainable harnessing, uh, we have planned you know, dialogues with all the stakeholders in both the places. Maybe in coming weeks, uh, our honorable minister would be leading these dialogues. We already had uh, you know, this decision in the ministry, as well as we are also in the process of developing high sea fishing guidelines that people can go out with their uh, you know, high-tech vessels and can do the tuna fishing as well. So I believe you have raised a very valid question that these are the resources on which we should be focusing. And then in the department, we have been assisting deep sea fishing vessels also. And uh, what are the gaps in the entire, you know, ecosystem of exploiting the tuna resources. Uh, before you joined our uh, fisheries development commissioner, he made a very detailed presentation that where are we, what are the available resources, what are the technologies uh, available, Poland and line fishing method, everything he spoke about and what all role it can play in nutritional security, what are the export markets and everything. He, I think he can share his presentation with you. So I believe uh, uh, this is a resources which is, uh, you know, waiting for to be tapped. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? We'll take one more. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Actually, sir, my question is to Dr. Mohan Garu. Yeah, you can sit down. Uh, uh, 
sir how is the waste management from the fish uh, what is its role in in the entrepreneurship and all and what are the equipment lagging behind that uh, fish processing need yeah yeah go ahead yeah sorry. hello yeah, so, yeah. Uh, actually you have raised a very valid question actually when we do the processing nearly 45% of waste is generated and uh, many times we can uh, develop uh, high value products from this waste like from skin gelatin like from uh, shrimp and all chitin chitosan glucosamine hydrochloride like that so there are many technologies available with our institute like cift and uh, uh, we provide all the technological solutions to convert this waste into the uh, useful products and we give complete training hand holding and all you can approach our institute we will definitely help you uh, and, uh, before we conclude i have uh, one piece of information and one clarification from the debate you know presentations going on uh, the impression may not be going that the standards traceability certification is only meant for the consignments of seafood which are you know meant for exports no they are equally applicable and we are trying our best to ensure that our domestic consumers are also getting seafood with traceability complying with fssi standards and the domestic consumers have every right to know the origin of the food origin of the seafood on their table that is one part the other part of information is this that in the february honorable union cabinet approved a scheme which is pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sahay yojana the important part of the scheme is that every stakeholder in a fisheries beat fishers fish farmer fish vendor fish loader fish transporter anyone who is associated with the fishery sector or aquaculture sector would be registered on national fisheries digital platform so please if the students out there the the aquaculture entrepreneurs out there please ensure the people around you are eligible to get registered on the platform will get a identity there was certificate would be generated and please mobilize as many as you can common service center is the nodal agency and the entire project it has a website also you can nfdp.dof.gov.in sy y you dot in pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sahay yojana website also you can visit and all the benefits all the incentives on adoption of efficient technologies producing safe fish or incentive for buying aquaculture insurance you'll get only after getting registered on the digital platform that is digital information ah, so over you, to your murti ji huh? quick quick yeah. yeah make it fast i am aravindan from tamil nadu so i am running a kadal kitchen is a pure authentic uh, seafood restaurant around six branches we are running on and around uh, chennai sir and also one in tirupati we collaborate in the brand of andhra government fish andhra sir uh, <coughs> after we go with uh, andhra fish andhra that scheme in pmmsy then when then only we know it that the great scheme of fish value added enterprises is going and we check with our government last four years that scheme there is no one unit also fish value added enterprise enterprises is not implemented in that sir but now we are approaching our uh, government of tamil nadu fisheries people are very supporting and developing sir sir there is a one interaction in, on that uh, is there is a 10 years uh, agreement for uh, uh, that the land or uh, that the building or take over sir that also in in metropolitan city or somewhere in uh, rural also in tamil nadu sir no one can give for 10 years sir yeah, yeah sir that is the problem sir registration yes this year in the sunset year of the scheme scheme would be you know reaching its uh, you know destination and will be closing the scheme what you are saying that 10 years lease period 
is not you know possible so in the next scheme we'll take care of this provision okay thank you sir thank you very i much. think uh, by this question answer we uh, completed uh, before uh, inviting uh, dr behra for concluding remarks i have a small assignment i like and just bring it i request uh, our chief executive just uh, hand over a moment over to the speakers uh, starting with our uh, joint secretary sir jana sir mr ankit arav yeah dr koya ha dr mohan now i request our uh, joint secretary sir to hand over moment over to chief executive <laughs> <laughs> मुझे भी एक दे नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट अवर चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव फॉर कंक्लूडिंग इन मस so now i request our uh, chief executive very good uh, good evening to all of you uh, time is very short i will not take much time uh, sagar mehra sahab our joint secretary uh, department of fisheries government of india uh, dr jk jena deputy director general icr fisheries and all the dignitaries present here and all our um, Uh, entrepreneur friends uh, department officials uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, i just want to conclude because this was this is what a workshop today small workshop meaning to nutritional security through sustainable fisheries and aquaculture and whatever the deliberation has been made uh, in the regarding to that uh, our department of fisheries and national fishery development board working hard because i am here for last 5 months i have seen all the staffs are engaged for the development of this fishery sector in conclusion i want to tell this and i assure with the leadership of our fisheries department by dr likhi and dr sagar mehra and neetu madam and all the dr rao all people are here torun they are working hard the digambar and sudhanshu all and niles all i may not take some few names all are working hard in collaboration with the national fishery development board how to have the fishery sector development in this country i have no doubt to that but as uh, just to conclude uh, the discussion have been made i will not tell much but i will give some keywords today what our all the dignitaries have told first is genetic improvement for the sector development second is species diversification for the sector development then we need more brood bank we know actually today we need lot of research we made because i am from also icr i know lot of research we have already made it has to reach to the farmer we need we have got a nfdb has a nfbb at bhubneswar you may not be knowing that they are producing joint row only center producing uh, multiplication of the high yielding variety and reaching to all nooks and corners of the country we need hundreds of nfbb in this country if you want to uh, catch the with the china then uh, we need robust fish tg surveillance program we have already but we need more then if you will see then uh, new technologies are coming up like genome editing 
genome editing using crispr cas9 technology for re disease resistance high growth rate fish we don't have the technology right now in india we have to do all these things then vaccines nanotechnology nano applications if we we'll see feed technology nutrigenomics these are the coming areas of research where we can do lot of work then ornamental fish for an example cmo fry has bred already 35 marine fish but none has none of the fishes are available in the market where we will stand then we have to do lot of work then pearl culture we were looking for pearl cluster then we need high yielding variety pearl importing from vietnam that we are also looking for similarly for seaweed cultivation seaweed cultivation we are looking for lakhadip seaweed because seaweed is the future food if we'll see the implications of uh, seaweed seaweed will be the future food when we not much food so we have to look for that then uh, fisheries cooperatives yesterday we had a meeting we have given a target with 11500 fisheries cooperatives it's a huge target actually but it's not like dairy farms uh, 10 farmers will be there you can have a, a cooperative society we need 10 hectares of fish land then only water body then only we can make a cooperative society in a village so these are the challenges what we are taking up then if you'll see world class fish market they have already told post harvest technology smart packaging all these things then a, a small scale fisheries with a participatory approach today morning we had a meeting somewhere that were talking of in som discussing regarding the wetland fisheries development it's a huge potential in assam in bihar lakhs of hectares are wetlands are there on tact we can have lot of production from those areas also taking small scale fisheries we being small marginal farmers then if we we'll talk of rivers and reservoirs rivers are now you see the microplastics pollutions pollution of industrial things many things then if we we'll talk of fish market information system i am just giving some key words then nfdp already you have told then state of art of facility uh, for the and sensor based fish freshness study what you have told then 3d printing 3d printing again like you know we are taking this soybean it's a chicken made up of uh, made up of vegetarian materials so like that vegetarian fish also we are looking from seaweeds using 3d printing technologies so you can have fish smell fish filling but it is not a fish it is a vegetarian so that kind of things are also looking for then uh, uh, if you will see insurance like as i told cooperatives similarly like insurance uh, we are looking for in this pmm case so a crop insurance we are looking for crop insurance it is going to be a game changer in this country i am telling you it's going to be a game changer all please participate in this insurance program similarly for vessel insurance group insurance scheme then uh, as uh, as uh, jana sir told that uh, sagar sahab is also looking for policy where is your uh, marine policy there is no a marine policy in this marine marine policy in this country right now so we have to look for that then aquaculture engineering we are not we are not never discussing about the aquaculture engineering many farms have developed iit iit was having kharagpur uh, is having a only mtech degree in aquaculture engineering we should have do, do lot of work on engineer aspect also hrd nfd is giving lot of training and uh, awareness uh, things and all that then uh, one sir uh, sagar mehra sir once we had, he told me you give some points where indian fisheries can go ahead so then i talked to dr uh, ravi shankar the director of cip he he advised me why education is also fisheries education is also equally important in this country for because of knowledge generation so he told that why not we are having 25 iits spending 1000 crores each why one world class fisheries university in this country having 1000 crore investment why not we can do it then with all state of art facilities all farmers all entrepreneurs can go to one university to see that these are the norwegian technology this denmark technology japanese technology why not we are spending lot of icer we have now 21 like indian institute of science we have 21 icers having 1000 1000 crores investment for each institute but why is it such a institute for fishery science not nowhere 1000 you spend and develop a world class you know sir that's what i am requesting you in your next policy we are having crores of rupees we are spending 1000 rupees for education in this country then sec and then is your strengthening fisheries education these are the few things i want to conclude i thanks thank you thank you, thank you very much for your patience thank you dr bena for uh, concluding remarks uh, i think we concluded everything just i want to thank uh, 
so DYF and all officials who arranged for this uh, very important uh, session. I think we had detailed discussion and all those things. Everybody is heard of, policy maker has heard of. So a uh, huge target ahead. So once again, I thank all of you who are directly, indirectly involved in making this program is very successful. Thank you one and all. Thank you.